today we're going to be looking at 5-5, completing the square. So let's look at under read the lesson. It says, give the reason for each step in the following solution of an, ex uh, of an equation by using the square root property. So if I look at my first equation, it says x squared minus 12x plus 36 is equal to 81. So my first step, I'm going to factor the perfect square trinomial. So y'all, you can either use SPT to solve this, or you should be able to determine by a difference of squares. So x minus 6 squared equal to 81. The next step, I'm going to square root both sides. So I square root, remember, to unsquare something. So when I square root here and here, I end up with x minus 6. And then remember, it's plus or minus the square root of 81. My next step is, well, I know that the square root of 81 is 9. So I rewrite it as x minus 6 is equal to plus or minus 9. Then I'm going to rewrite it as two separate equations. So I have x minus 6 equals 9, or I have x minus 6 equals negative 9. And my last step is going to be to solve each equation. So when I solve the first one, I get x equals 15. When I solve the second one, I have x equals negative 3. So let's look at question 2. Part 2 says to explain how to find the constant that must be added to make a binomial into a perfect square trinomial. Okay, so I want you to write this formula down. The formula is going to be your b divided by 2 squared. Now remember, b is your middle term. So my middle term, for instance, in this first example is a negative 12. So look to the right, and my example is going to say negative 12 divided by 2 in parentheses, and I'm going to square it. So a negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6, and a negative 6 squared is 36, which is where my c came from in that original equation. Okay, so let's look at number three. It says, what is the first step in solving the equation of 3x squared plus 6x is equal to 5 by completing the square? So here, you're actually going to divide everything by 3. Before you can start completing the square, your a term, which is my 3x squared, has to be a 1. So in order for this to become a 1, I must divide everything by 3 first. Okay, part b what is the first step in solving the equation of x squared plus 5x minus 12 equals 0 by completing the square? Now, this x squared is already equal to 1, so I don't have to divide anything, but I need to get my c term, which is a negative 12, to the other side. So I'm going to add 12 to each side in order to start completing the square. Okay, so question 4 says, how can you use the rules for squaring a binomial to help you remember the procedure for changing a binomial into a perfect square trinomial? I want y'all to think about question four, and we're going to discuss it tomorrow. So let's look at the next page. Okay, looking at the two examples that you have, okay, in order for me to complete the square, look at this first part. It says to complete the square for quadratic expression of the form x squared plus bx, follow these steps. We're going to find b divided by 2, which is what we did on the first page. Once we get that, we're going to square what b divided by 2 is, and then we're going to add that number to x squared plus bx. So let's look at example 1. It says, find the value of c that makes x squared plus 22x plus c a perfect square trinomial. Then we're going to write the trinomial as the square of a binomial. So b in this particular equation was 22. So b divided by 2, so 22 divided by 2 is 11. Okay, 11 squared is 121. So my C term in this trinomial is positive 121. So whenever I rewrite it as a binomial, I have X plus 11 in parentheses squared. Okay, let's look at example number two. Here it says I'm going to solve 2X squared minus 8X minus 24 equals 0 by completing the square. Remember, your original equation, your x squared has to be 1. Well, right here it's 2. So the first step is divi to divide each side by 2. So my new equation becomes x squared minus 4x minus 12, and anything divided by 0 is just still 0. Okay, I have to move this negative 12 to the other side, so I'm going to add 12 to each side. So I get x squared minus 4x equals 12. And then we're going to use the same formula we used in example 1 and what we did up here to complete the square. So again, b divided by 2, so a negative 4 divided by 2, and I'm going to square it. 
So I have negative 2 squared, which is a positive 4. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Remember, whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other side. And I'm going to rewrite it. So x squared minus 4x plus 4 becomes x minus 2 squared. And 12 plus 4 is 16. Now again, I'm going to unsquare it. So the only way I can do that is square root both sides. So I end up with x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus 4. And I'm going to rewrite each equation. So I have x minus 2 equals 4. And x minus 2 equals negative 4. And when I solve both of those, your answers become x equals 6 and x equals negative 2. So the way you write the solution set, you're going to write it in brackets. You have 6 comma negative 2. The order of the answers do not matter. So let's actually work an example on your paper. Okay, let's look at the first uh, set of problems. It says find the value of c that makes each trinomial a perfect square. Then write the trinomial as a perfect square. So I'm actually going to work problem number 2. I've got x squared plus 60x plus c. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is remember use the formula b divided by 2 squared. So my b term is 60. So when I write using the formula, I have 60 divided by 2 squared. Well, 60 divided by 2 is 30, and 30 squared is 900. So when I rewrite my trinomial, I have x squared plus 60x, and my c becomes the plus 900. So I'm going to use that information, and I'm going to be able to write it as a square. So my new binomial becomes x plus 30 squared. So the way I can make sure that I did it correctly is take x plus 30, write it out twice, and I can FOIL it to make sure I ended up with x squared plus 60x plus 900. So you're going to use example number 2 to finish uh, 1 through 6 on that first section. So let's look at the second section. Okay, my second section says I'm going to solve each equation by completing the square. So we're going to use that second example um, up top, and I'm going to work problem number 9. So we have s squared minus 10s plus 21 is equal to 0. Okay, in order to complete the square, remember your c term has to be on the right-hand side of the equation, and my a term, which for this one is s squared, has to be 1. So it is already 1. So my first step is going to be to move the positive 21 to the other side. So whenever I move it to the right-hand side of the equation, it becomes a negative 21. Now we're going to use our same formula, the b divided by 2 squared, in order to figure out what number we're going to use to complete the square. So once I figure that out, I have negative 10 divided by 2 squared. My b term becomes 25, or excuse me, my new c term becomes 25. Now we're going to add the 25 to both the left and the right-hand side of the equation. So I have s squared minus 10s plus 25 is equal to that negative 21, and I'm also going to add 25 to that side of the equation. Okay, I'm going to take the s squared minus 10s plus 25. I'm going to rewrite it as a binomial. So I have s minus 5 squared is equal to 4. Negative 21 plus 25 is 4. Now we're going to solve it. So in order to get rid of my squared here, I have to square root both sides. So I end up with s minus 5 is equal to plus or minus 4. Remember, when you square root a number, you have both a plus and a minus answer. I write these equations out twice. So I have an s minus 5 equals 4 and an s minus 5 equals a negative 4. And I'm going to solve them. So your two answers should be s equals 9 and s equals 1. Now remember, we write them as brackets. Okay, so you're going to use example number 9 to help you all with 7 through 15. Now be aware that some of these examples will have fractions in them. Don't assume you did them incorrectly. Okay, so let's look at... Uh, problem number 11 on the same page, I'm going to work one with fractions. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm going to work the rest of the examples in class tomorrow. So y'all make sure you get these copied down, and we will go over the rest in class tomorrow.